talk. Have you ever tried anything like Hello Talk? Uh, where no. You can, no. Okay. Yeah, there's no. there's some social media apps where uh, people join to practice meeting, you know, meeting with uh, anonymous people online and just having practice conversations. Oh yeah, it is health benefit. Maybe I can download them. Yeah, but... I tried it. I thought I thought that uh, the conversations were a little bit too short and superficial. Um, oh. Also, I'd have no time for it. <laughs> but to go back to um, yeah, so when I first came to China, um, I was uh, I was placed into a Chinese vocational college in Sichuan, Chengdu, Sichuan. Oh. Oh. So that was my introduction to China. I loved it. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I worked in Sichuan for about a year, um, but I found that the money was a little bit low. Oh, so, I like that too, yes. Have you been to Sichuan before? Uh, actually, no, but my roommate in college, yeah. um, they come from Sichuan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely, you have to visit Sichuan if you get a okay. chance. If, if you get to be a primary school teacher with long summer holidays, you should uh, use one of them for uh, maybe two or three weeks to go um, oh, oh, I remember in mm-hmm. my middle school, I have been in to Sichuan. I go my family with yeah. I, with my father and mother and another uncle and auntie mm-hmm. go yeah. to Jiu Zai Go. Jiu Zai Go, yeah, I've been there. Yes. I've been yes. there. It's a, it's an ancient fortress. Yes, I think and oh, it's so very beautiful. It's gorgeous. The water yeah. Clean. Yeah, it's very, it's very, yeah, very clean, very well preserved. Um, so my impression of Sichuan was this is like an agricultural province. So yeah. it's very rich in um, agricultural resources like vegetables and fruits and uh, herbal teas and medicines. And yeah. so and also tourism, like before all of this um, COVID craziness, I think that uh, Sichuan was a very popular destination and yeah. the government was very, very friendly towards um uh, uh, op- opening up um, parts of the country for foreign tourism, and they were inviting all kinds of uh, foreign English teachers to come and live in Sichuan, and they treated us very well. They they gave us um, like introductions to Chinese uh, writing and calligraphy, and a visit to the Sichuan Opera, and to see the pandas, and um, oh. they just treated us very nicely. So because of the oper- because of my first experience working in um, uh, working at Sichuan was so uh, positive, overwhelmingly positive. I, I guess I kind of just fell in love with the lifestyle yeah. from then. Um, but then again, the money was not uh, amazing because uh, the hours were quite low. So as oh. a as a as a college teacher, maybe you have one class a day, oh. <laughs> one or two forty minute classes a day, and they don't really pay you for it. So um, I went on to move. I went on to live in Guangdong for oh. two three years, and this was the like the real hard. Uh, training center work where I uh, taught in um, uh, children's centers uh, from you know kindergarten up until primary school age the long days of like 10 classes a day Um, but I moved up from there to teaching more academic uh, English and homework help to teenagers and uh, then I went on to Russia and uh, I lived in Russia for about a year and a half um, and and there I started to le- work more with adults. So oh. in in China, I think that the um, the teaching market is predominantly young children uh, mm. up until the ages of uh, twelve, right? From five all the way, maybe four all the way up until twelve. Once the children hit middle school and high school, uh, they don't they don't take English that seriously. After yeah. they reach high school, they focus more on their other subjects. Um, yeah. So the majority of the teaching for um, China is those ages, um, whereas in Russia, uh, the majority of uh, uh, students that you teach are adults who are doing business with Europe or interested in traveling to Europe or wanting to take the IELTS for study in Europe. Oh. So, uh, yeah, that's, what, uh, that's where I got my training in, in teaching IELTS. Um, but again, the money wasn't very good. Uh, so I came back to China and I worked for a center called uh, Weibo or Webby International. Oh. And this is a school that um, 
doesn't exist anymore. None of the English training centers exist anymore. But this was one of China's largest uh, English franchises for adults, again, teaching TOEFL, teaching business English, mm-hmm. and just teaching uh, like basic uh, intermediate level English. So if you watch the videos on my channel, the ones where I was live streaming, uh, those were intended for my teenage students and uh, university age students who didn't know a lot about these other academic subjects like history and art and uh, science and philosophy. And so um, I only had so much time to teach them in the center, but I decided to open up sort of a free live streaming service for students to follow along. And um, now I work in Hangzhou and I work for an agency that uh, puts me in different places as need be. So I've been working in a middle school, I've been working in a kindergarten, I've been working in a primary school. And uh, through all of this time, I've got to know uh, your friend Catherine, and uh, we've been uh, doing uh, extra uh, online IELTS teaching for the better part of three years, actually. So time, time really flies, and I, I, I've kept busy.